Do you remember the last time this warning message showed up on my RCZ? Well, it decided to come back after we first met in the summer for the bad fuel issue. It was last November while I was enjoying a leisurely 200 km an hour cruise on an unlimited stretch of the German Autobahn A81 between Stuttgart and Fulda. Honestly, nothing happened right away other than myself getting really frustrated with this car having just reached 100,000 km on that trip. I was just saying to myself, what a great car! And then I thought, what next, you piece of shit? Well, I eventually did arrive at my destination, but when I first started up again with a cold engine, it ran quite roughly on quite quite rough on idle, and the, it, it, the exhaust fumes smelled very strongly of uh, unburned fuel. So it did get better once it uh, warmed up a bit, like the idle would run normally. Uh, but uh, man, was it slow! Like I mean, there was no horsepower left. Like it felt really like 195 horses out of the 200 had just gone. Obviously, it went into limp home mode, which meant that I could drive it up to motorway speeds, but it would take me forever to speed up, and I had no torque left to sustain it. Well, since it was winter, I just hoped that it was some kind of cold weather diva attitude, and that it would return to normal shortly. After googling the issue and hooking up my diagnostics tool to read the error codes and confirm my nightmare, I knew what the issue was. The error code was P0087 fuel rail system pressure too low, which translates into a faulty high pressure fuel pump. I also found out that the faulty high pressure fuel pump was a common problem on the THB Prince engines across the PSA brands and MINI. So if your car was built after September 2012, it shouldn't be concerned. Of course, mine was built just before that. So now there's only one thing left to do. Let's get it fixed. All right, and here are pretty much all the tools and parts you need to uh, do the repair. So basically you have a, a ratchet set with a 7mm for the, uh, the hoses. You can also use a, a larger Phillips screwdriver, that's up to you. But I prefer to use a ratchet because it would be like the bolts are much more secured on that than they, they would be on a, on a screwdriver. And then we have a 10 millimeter one, so that's for when you want to reach the uh, low pressure fuel line uh, release to remove the hoses on the side. Uh, a 30 millimeter for the, um, for the battery tray. Obviously a set of pliers, a small uh, screwdriver. You might need that to relieve the clips, the electronic clips. And then this is basically a uh, panel uh, plastic tool for the interior but you can use it to remove some of the hoses that are clipped in in the back and then of course here is the high pressure fuel pump this is the old one because I'm showing you this after I did the repair so this is the old one but that, I mean just get the new one I'll leave the parts number in the description and then you know which one to get and then here basically the, uh, the toolkit to really well the toolkit the setup to release the fuel pressure on the low pressure fuel line. Right, so this is the high pressure fuel pump here, right here, this uh, metal piece here. So we need to get rid of that or get access to it. So what we have to do first is get rid of all of this here. We need to make space here, take all these uh, air intake elements out, this here, um, take this hose that leads up to the, the air filter, take this one out and the one below also. And then, so in order for us, or for me, or for you, or whoever is doing this, to get those screws out, there are two, two screws uh, in here, Allen, Allen keys. Oh, actually, I forgot that in the in the, the tools and part part. Um, we need to remove the battery from the battery tray and everything that goes with it. So basically, a third of the engine bay has to come out of the car, so we can access this little high pressure fuel pump. Cool.
thing to know is when you, before you take off the high pressure fuel pump, you need to take the pressure off the, the low pressure uh, fuel line. Actually, there's still pressure from the system on this line, so when you take it off, it would just like, spill out fuel. So you need to take the pressure off that one. So the line, as you've seen, is down here, and the pressure release is on this side, right down here, this little, this little uh, valve that looks like a car uh, tire valve. All right, so this is a very simple setup to release the fuel pressure in the low pre pressure fuel line. So basically all you have to do, well, you just need like an empty bottle, some transparent tube and a screwdriver and you just put it up here in the, on top end, like when you breathe the, bra the, bla the brakes and the brakes. And uh, you put the screwdriver in here, so it's pinch it through the, the tube. And you need, you actually need this to open the valve of the low pressure fuel valve. And uh, that will just, the fuel will just come through if there's any pressure on it. This is where this kit here with the, the bottle and the, the tube and the screwdriver come in handy to, once you get rid of this hoses here and mount those, open up this valve cover, put it on, stick it on, and then just press the, the screwdriver through and to open the valve and to let any any fuel pressure off. So in my case, actually, I didn't really I didn't really have to do that because uh, well, I did it, but there wasn't any fuel coming off. I didn't really have any fuel pressure to deal with because I think the reason why that is is because the high pressure fuel pump is faulty and when it's, once it's running it's, it's unable to build up any real pressure so I figured that because of this the pressure in the low pressure fuel line wasn't really building up either so I'm not sure if you know please let me know in the comments but actually I just hooked it on and there wasn't much fuel coming out there was certainly there wasn't any pressure coming like there wasn't any pressure build up in the system but you never know you're better safe than sorry so it's better on to hook it on to release the pressure and then being able to remove the high pressure fuel pump safely and remove the low pressure hose you need to remove this white clip this one here so now one of the most important things is the actual removal of the high pressure fuel pump so i don't know why it didn't show when I actually did it, the, my battery must have died. Anyway, this is also a very good situation opportunity to show you how it looks like. So this is already the old one in my hands, the new one is in the car. First, disconnect the electric connection and then the low pressure fuel intake here with the little clip and then the high pressure outlet which is bolted on the back here with the 14 millimeter wrench. So if you look in here, if you look in here, ooh, it's very dark. Where is it? Let me just switch the light. In here, take the 40 millimeter wrench and remove this. But first, obviously, the low pressure fuel line here. Take a T30 Torx screwdriver or ratchet or whatever you have in suits, and then unbolt three ones on the side here, one, two, three, here, and that's it. Just put a little bit of uh, thread lock on it when you reinstall it then. Just make sure when you install the new one, this is just the old one as an example, that this is properly aligned with the counterpart inside the engine so it can lock in and the fuel pressure pump can actually be aligned with the engine block here, it needs to be flush. Uh, clip in the electrical connection before you, before you install the um, pressure pump and also the low pressure connection here and then 
the high pressure one. Also reconnect, reinstall this plastic clip into the low pressure uh, fuel line. Actually, mm. I need both hands to do this. All right, once the high pressure pump is in, make sure that uh, you reconnect properly the uh, high pressure fuel line and then you tighten it up. That the clip is properly in on this one, on the low pressure one, and it can't move. Like, I mean, it will move a little bit. Wiggle it around, it can move like a millimeter back and forth, but not really. Can't get out. That's how it's supposed to be. And then well, put everything back together. a bit of a tricky one to get in properly and not to bend the rubber like there's another inside rubber between this um, hose and the actual turbo here turbocharger so just be very careful maybe grease it up with a little bit of silicon spray and guide it in um, uniformly from like straight up from this side not bend in Here's one top tip. Please make sure to delete the error code after the repair. It may disappear at some point, but it will come back eventually and put your car back into limp home mode. So after I actually deleted the error code with the diagnostics tool, the car was fine. I mean, it had really come back to life. I could drive around normally. It really was a huge pressure and huge relief also to be able to drive normally again and then know also that changing the high pressure pump was the actual, well, the high pressure pump was the actual fault that the old one was uh, gone bad and that the fault wasn't anywhere else. So this brings me up to the last point, what did it cost? Well, there are different possibilities you can do, like either, obviously if you do it yourself, you need to come up with the part and there are different places where you can get it. Obviously you can get it on, on all the different uh, PSA brands, uh, Peugeot, Citroën, DS, Oh, you can also get it at Mini because Mini obviously used this uh, engine or engine block 
in their uh, second generation uh, Cooper. And uh, you have the possibility to check out those places or maybe buy also a used part. I had been waiting all winter to take care of this car so I actually just wanted to get it done and I, I wasn't really in the mood to uh, check around all the places so I just went to the Peugeot dealer, I uh, bought the car in 2012, I got the part, I told them the VIN number, they got me the part and then they <laughs> told me the price also, I actually paid 760 Swiss francs for this part uh, alone, which is a lot. I mean, I was expecting around 500 from what I had read online, but prices fluctuate. So that's what I pay. Uh, I'd love to know what you, for those of you who have done this already, I'd love to know what you paid for the price. Uh, just leave a comment, tell me if you if you want to tell me. And, uh, and then I did it. So, with that said, thank you very much for your support, thank you very much for watching, and see you soon next time.